Sorry, a little quick on the draw there, John, but uh, let's get into the great game debate. So yeah, in this segment, we take a look at board games of the past and see if that game still holds up to today's standards. And the great game Keyflower is what we're going to talk about today. And uh, to give us a little intro, here is my friend Andy. In Keyflower, you and your opponents are building your own tableaus in front of yourself via hexes that you will uh, bid on throughout a round. You do so by taking meeples from behind your screen and placing them out here when you would bid on them. Let's say this tile here is up for bid. If I wanted to do it and I'm playing this opponent over here, if there's just two of us, we would just pick a side. So this would be my side, this would be their side. I'll say I'm going to bid one yellow meeple. In order to outbid me, they would need to put two yellow meeples here and then can outbid me. They cannot do so with a different colored meeple like a red because this has been set as yellow. Whoever wins that hex at the end of the round will then be able to add it to their tableau. Also, when hexes are out here, you can also use the action for the hex while it's out there. Again, if yellow has been set as the color, you could then use yellow and put it on here to take the action. In this case, you would get two uh, black uh, resources, which I believe are coal or oil. I don't remember. Anyway, you would get those and they would go to your home, home spot here on your board in your tableau. Once the uh, bid is won, every meeple that's on there also comes with you and you get to put that back behind your screen. At the end of each round, you bid on these different boats that will can be contained with other meeples that you can replenish your meeple supply back here. You can also play throughout the round on your tableau to do different actions or on your opponent's tableau. The downside of playing on your opponent's tableau is that they will get to take those meeples at the end of the round that you played and put them behind their screen. So it's a game of worker placement, hex building, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I really recommend checking out Keyflower. We've all had a chance to play this game at least once. I've played it many, many times. I'm sure Daniel has played it many, many times. I think Chris has played it multiple times. Uh, I know John has only played it maybe once. But uh, regardless, I'm going to give you my thoughts and how they are better than everybody else's thoughts right now. Okay? <laughs> Keyflower. What's not to love about this game? It's amazing. It's got colored wooden meeples. It has hexes. It has an agrarian theme. It's got resource management. It's got bidding. It's got worker placement. It's a classic Euro. It has just enough complexity to make you work for it. And there's just enough interactivity with the outbidding people and taking actions on their tableaus and trying to thwart things they're trying to do that it, it just makes it really fun. It really itches that perfect spot for me in gaming. It, it, it epitomizes what I I like in a Euro game. So I I have very few problems with Keyflower. I enjoy it quite a bit. I will say if there are any downsides, and I tried to come up with a few just in case, I would say that new people who are not as familiar with the iconography, that might be a little bit of a... Uh, a, a, a a learning curve. Uh, you do have to look at everybody's uh, tableaus. And so if you've got a lot of people playing, there's a lot of stuff to look at. Um, and I will say that it doesn't play the best with its max players. I mean, one of the things that I do like about it is that you can technically play six players, but you don't ever really want to do that. It just takes way too long. And in fact, five is almost too long. I really think it hits the sweet spot at three and four players. If uh, you're prone to analysis paralysis, uh, this one can hurt you. And I say that as someone who is prone and struggles in this area. But I will say that my analysis paralysis usually pays off. Every time I've taken my time and really thought about things, I almost always win this game. <laughs> hey, Andy, I got a I got a pop quiz for you. Sure. Are <laughs> are the gold pieces wilds? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> we've had this. Yeah, Daniel, I'll let you talk about this during your time. But we've had a we've had an ongoing miscommunication with the rules. So yeah, maybe it was a house rule. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't a house rule, but it kind of does like play into that a little bit because we literally like the first time we ever read it, I was like, it's not a wild. But then we like reread it. And we're like, hey, it is a wild. So like ever since we play it, we have the conversation before every game. We go, wait, golds are wilds, right? And they're like, no, they're not wilds. And then halfway through the game, we're like, yeah, they're wilds. And then the new <laughs> people always go, seriously? And we're just like, gosh. How do we misread the rule book every time? <laughs> but I will tell you guys this. I love this game. It's one of my top 10 games of all time. Um, the key flower is the epitome of games that I enjoy um, the, the, of the country, ugh, crunchy Euro uh, uh, the, uh, decisions. Yeah, whatever. It's a crunchy Euro that I like, and it's the epitome of that. So, um, I love when you're playing a game that you're trying to think about what your opponents are going to do. 
And with the auction mechanic of this, it does that perfectly. You have different colored meeples that you're holding behind your screen. So you're like, oh, I might have like 10 red. So you might like just put one red at a time, setting that color in the place, knowing that Andy has fewer reds. And as I see him pointing out more reds, I suddenly can decide, okay, now's my time to leap. And I'm going to put down three reds. And then Chris is like, boom, four reds, sucker. And I'm like, no, because I'm all out of reds. It's a really great game where you're always trying to figure out what the other players have, what's behind their screen. And you always have an idea of what there is because it's complete um, knowledge uh, when the game, you know, between each round, because you're going to have meeples on the tiles in front of you and meeples on the boats. So you know what the players got behind their screens. So you can always be like, oh, well, Chris has less yellow. So if he's going to go yellow here, then I know I can go, you know, yellow somewhere here and he can't outbid me because he's played all of his yellows. This is the greatest game for that. Also, it has that auction, uh, which all auctions are just great. So you're always trying to think um, how much something is worth and when you should pounce. And I do have to mention that this game, I have to strongly disagree with Andy that this game is incredible at six players. It is one of the best six player games. If somebody asked me to make a list of top 10 games at six players, this is going to be number one because it gives you all the experiences that you want in a good deep game and you can play it with any number of people. And the only reason Andy doesn't like it is because when we played six players, we discovered what Andy time truly is. I literally (laughs) timed it. It took five people one and a half minutes to take their turn collectively and it took andy three and a half minutes that people is what we call andy time the who won the game long, just who andy won long. the game you know who didn't win the game everyone who had to wait for you to take your ridiculously long turns but i did win doesn't I did matter win. but you but you lost sir because now <laughs> andy time is a thing win the game lose friends that's how that <laughs> Um, Call Monopoly. I should yeah. make that a t-shirt. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, so Key Flower. Yes, I've only played it once, as was rumored. And I played it with Dan Connors and uh, Dr. Marsh. So some really a friend of ours who's a very good gamer. So very good competition. And like Andy, I did win. Um, but didn't really enjoy the game that much, to be honest with you. And I think it's... I know it gets old sometimes, me harping on theme, but why they had to cram this kind of mechanisms into this pioneering theme where it really seems to make no sense to me, where you're bidding with people and you're, the tiles are ugly and why you're able to use someone else's cart without them letting you use their cart that they bought and put in their, in their village makes no sense. If this would have been this, or the bidding and everything where sometimes you want to not win the thing, you just want to use it, it reminds me of Furnace. And if this had a, an industrial theme and a like Chris likes the black hearted, you know, coming at you theme like that and had some really cool looking tiles with some industrial buildings and stuff like that on that did things that other than get some stone, get some wood, get some, oh, come on, seriously, and drag it with a horse. That's, that's amazing. If it was a cool industrial theme with similar mechanics and you're not bidding with meat with people, I mean, that makes no sense. Uh, then, then I think I could get behind this game and really enjoy it. But as it is, it's just it's it's not attractive, and it, there's a complete disconnect between the theme and all the mechanics. But the cool thing about it is those player shields look really cool. I'll tell you that you got a house to put your people in, and it looks like a house. So, and that it looks the player shields neat. are the all worst the, part of the game. They're all made the player cardboard. shields are the best part of the game. Are you kidding me? They you even work. They have a top. You're you're an idiot, and here's why. <laughs> Listen. You also said like, oh, people could just use your tableau and use your cart with with with, with no penalty. You get. To I didn't keep say with people. no penalty. I said you without permission. You get to keep their meeple. It's worth yes. it. You want them to use your stuff. Not always. Not always. Mm. Not when you need to move something and build something up. They took it from me already. Gosh dang it! Well, then you got to prepare for it. If exactly. You think you're going to take it's your stupid. stuff. You got to play stupid. it on. It's stupid. If it had non strategy games. If it have a black hearted theme of industrial revolution kind of that would make sense. You're stealing secrets from somebody. You're doing something like that. No, it's my horse and my freaking cart. How can somebody just come and use it? And of course you would no bid sense. with people. They're the greatest resources we have on the earth. People. In the old Everybody days, be, John. Everything should be bid. In the old days, there were slaves. Is that what you're no, in the old Andy? days? You're about to say? I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about in the old <laughs> days. You would help your neighbor out and like, hey, could I use your uh, horse and cart? Well, sure, buddy. Just give me a meeple. You just... <laughs> Just give me one of your kids. Boy, that's I think that conversation probably matter. happened. 
No, no, no. Give me one of your red kids. <laughs> See, now, why do you got to make it about color, John? <laughs> That's what you do in this game. I do like that green are the uh, the, the the best, though. Green are the best people in yeah, this. That meeting. is true. That is true. All right, well, Chris, what about you, man? You know what? I like, uh, I, I'm just going to tell you, I love this game. What? I love this what? game. <laughs> and you know why I love this game? Because it's old. Because it proves that Daniel is a two-faced, <laughs> unequivocal, unabashed liar. <laughs> liar. He talks all this mess about old games, bad art, and well tight, well executed, good a logistics within a game, and everything about this game is the exact opposite. Really? I am ashamed to call this an old man game. It is it, it is so bad. I, I uh, the art again. I don't care about art, and it's terrible. And and and, and then the uh, the logistics. And, and I don't know if I don't know, if you're watching the show and not on the podcast. If you're on the podcast, go to YouTube, check us out, watch it. Roll back to while Daniel's talking to the moment that he says this game sings at six players. My eyes become dollar signs or not dollar, like a plates, you know, like yeah. a dollars, uh, silver dollars silver because. Dollars. There is nothing worse and more confusing logistically I have ever played in board games than this game at six players. With the way that the bidding works and you put your meeples around the 8,000 tiles that are in the center. And then in addition, you need to see everyone's board around the table so you can play off of theirs, which is what you're supposed to do. But that's insane. And what all leads to is Andy taking three and a half minutes. You know why we took a minute and a half? Because we just played on the tiles in front of us because it was impossible to see the other ones. This game is trash. Like, seriously, I really hate this game. I don't understand why it's so highly rated. It's really bad, people. It's really bad. It's a thinking man's game, Chris. It's so bad. It's a thinking man's game. And you have to, you know what? You have to sometimes get out of your seat a little bit and go, uh, you know, pro- walk around. Yeah, yeah, let's just take a walk while we're playing the game. You Absolutely. don't have to walk around. You have to pay attention while other people are playing. You have to know that that tile is out there. And when Somewhere. you see it, you're like, oh, that's going to be a really good tile. I need to make sure I play on it before Chris. Because if I do, I can actually screw Chris over because he's like, I was going to play my blue meeple there, but you put your yellow. And then you, it's a satisfying experience. And just because you don't know what tiles are out there doesn't mean it's a bad game. It just means you don't know the game well enough. And it I'm doesn't sorry. I, I decided to play a Euro game, not a, a copy of Memory. No. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and it's not, the... it doesn't look that bad, especially yes, when you does. get the uh, the uh, the upgrades. Daniel's got these lovely bags for the seasons. that are. That's true. I got nice little silk bags and big chunky chips. And those tiles look nice. What are you talking about, If you pay about, extra, John? the game doesn't look as bad. That's that's what I heard. No, that's no, no. The watch. tiles are perfectly fine. They're so fine that my kids love this game. They don't play it by the rules. They literally just play with the that's tiles. Cool. I'm like, hey, why don't you play with these Dungeons and Dragon tiles? And they're like, no, no, no. I want to play with key flower tiles. You know why? Because they come to life and they even <laughs> bring the imagination <laughs> wow. of children. Oh, well. This is not an exaggeration, guys. This is true. This, this <laughs> might have to come back up again because I feel like we still have a lot to say about this yeah. wonderful game, Keyflower. If you've enjoyed this, please be sure and like and subscribe and uh, sound off in the comments. What are your thoughts on Keyflower? Is and let it... us know how horribly wrong Chris is. Absolutely. Defensively wrong. Is it worthy of the great game debate? Please tell us and uh, share it with us, and uh, we look forward to uh, reading your comments soon. Hey, thanks for watching a clip from Around the Board. It's a show that comes out every other Thursday where we discuss board games and board game topics. We're awarded points, and at the end, whoever wins gets to be on their soapbox and say whatever they want. So if you want to watch the full episode, find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. What do you do with the meeples? I like to play a lot of stuff. Do they fight? I think so. Or do they bounce from one tile to the other? Do they race? I have no idea because the last time I messed around with Team Flower it's been a long time. You got black stuff, I don't know the name of. So yeah, I think that's it. Oh boy. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, I have some wood. Would anyone like to trade some people?
Me, 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 me. Oh, you would. What would you try? Me. What would you try? I have four pieces of wood. My chainsaw. Brennan, what do you think of key flower? Well, I, I, I think it's pretty fun. What? How do you play it? Uh, I grab the key. I grab the key for the whole hand and shift. Kind of find the shift. Can you show us? Thanks. So Yay! good. Captain. Huh? It's gonna help. There's a war about. To, there's a war about to happen. Everyone's gonna die if you don't do something about it. It's good. You're gonna have to come soon. Quick, quick, quick. Otherwise, we're all gonna die. It's, ah! gonna, be, it's gonna be your fault. <laughs> Uh, okay. ah!